Hey, how's it going? Ryan Paul Grant here, set to base triathlon.com, Glorious World Headquarters of Set to Base Triathlon. You may hear some background noises, you may not. Great. We're going to get through this video because we're going to talk about Ironman Chattanooga and we're going to talk about what you should be doing about three months out from race day. I've done the race four times myself. Um, love the race, love the event, love the venue, love everything about it. So, we've got a lot of inside information, so let's jump right into the video. I've seen the background, I got the little website pulled up, but being a coach making plans and training peaks i've made plans specifically for the course for ironman chattanooga i've made it for a beginner intermediate and advanced level athlete so what i'll do on the left side of the screen here where i got the mouse this is the advanced plan on the right side this is the beginner plan both of for weeks long so i'd look about six months out uh, to start your true training plan beginner is kind of a couch to ironman kind of training plan beginner is You've done a few races, maybe a half, maybe a full, um, or you've really got you know more time to work with, more flexibility, so you can do longer rides, longer runs, higher intensity, that type of thing. So that's a little bit of a difference. Advanced plans, a little bit more intensity, a little bit more volume, and beginner plans with less intensity. Uh, maybe if you got some injuries and stuff going on, the plan, uh, beginner plans will be better for you. Or you just want to finish, want to have a good time, want to be comfortable, beginner plan might be best for you. But we're just going to look at the two. If you're in it, and you're kind of in between, then maybe you're in between these things. Because everybody's always asking, it's like, oh, three months out, what are you guys doing for your training? And always, it's always interesting. You've got things all over the place. You know, you got people jokingly, I'm, I'm up to my eight hour ride, my four hour run afterwards, or the swimming's canceled, and I'm not even worried, I'm not even worried about swimming or anything like that. So keep that in mind. Take everything with a grain of salt. Because you notice in some life plans, um, some have three swim swings. Two, it just kind of depends. Advanced athletes probably have a little less swimming actually because downriver swim, there's lots of legal. Um, but you might get later into a build phase, and so these plans might not line up right at the same time because, like, I build phases, recovery phases, transition phases, race prep, all that kind of good stuff. So it's not going to be like you look at one advanced plan, inner plans, oh, I'm doing this and that and the other. Um, it's all kind of individual to you. But it depends on the volume you can handle, the intensity you can handle. So sometimes the advanced plan might be less swimming just because you're an advanced athlete. Maybe swimming is not your the sweet spot, so especially for this course, downriver swim, possibly wet suit legal. Maybe you want to focus a little bit more on the riding, so that's what some sections of it do. And then some sections focus a little bit more on the swim because we want to get you the speed, but you have the ability to go from a 2K swim three times a week to maybe a 3K swim three times a week. It's not that big of a difference for you. Around the beginners, maybe you need that little bit of step up. You know, 1.5K to the 2K, the 2.5K to 3K, the 3.5K, and then how to work with that. So, I'm not saying this is exactly how it goes for all my plans. And you're going to see a difference, like I said, from an advanced beginner. But I just want to show you kind of where everybody kind of falls in there. So, if you look at the advanced plan, I mean, I've got uh, one hard bike workout, a uh, foundation for, for power fighting because this is. Uh, Iron Man Chattanooga does have quite a few hills on it on the bike course. Uh, I like it, it's rolling hills, uh, but you are going to need to be able to have some uh, climbing ability as we talk about bike course. And then we've got a lot of kind of volume. There's lots of opportunities to just be an arrow and just go out and kind of crank out the watts, find your sweet spot, and just get, go with that. So we've got a nice little bike ride mile 10 minutes here during the week. And on the weekend, you're looking about an 80 mile ride at this point in time for an advanced athlete for a few months out for Iron Chattanooga. So you're like, oh, that's a lot. But if you look over here at the beginner plan, you're at about three hours and 50 miles. Kind of depends on where you're at as far as your, your average pace and everything like that. So I, I estimate these with my plans. So don't think you, think you have to hit 50 miles in three hours because you're more likely not going to be doing that if you're a beginner athlete. So it's kind of an estimate. So with all my plans, it's just you take those estimates of a grain of salt. But if it says, you know, in the title, it has kind of some explicit instructions. The timing of three hours is more important than the 50 miles or something like that. So I've got videos out there kind of explaining what it So I won't get too much into that. But for the run, advanced athletes are looking at 14 miles, kind of three kilometers at this point. And beginner, about 13 miles. So you're pretty close as far as the running go. And this course is very challenging as far as running goes, really. So you notice we've got some threshold runs for the advanced athlete. We've got some tempo mile repeats. We've got some hill work and some other weeks. And in the beginner, we got some tempo work because we're going to do build some strength. And we got some strength working here. So notice we probably have already cycled through the advanced athlete building that hill foundation because you already got that foundation built before you actually start your plan. 
Whereas in the beginner plan, you're hitting those hill workouts later in the workout just because we need to build that base to get you to that point to do those types of workouts. So you've got a tempo run and a hill work, which is uh, pretty high strength stuff. So this week is a build week for both of these. Um, so, you know, just to make sure you're, you're aware of that. So it just depends on when they are in build phase, you know, it's like the beginner plan, the next plan next week is going to be a transition. So this is the end of the build phase. And it looks like the uh, beginner, this is the end of the build phase as well. So, you know, just be aware of that these phases are a little bit different than plans. You know, the week before for beginner, we're looking about the same type of bike workout and a little bit, you know, like a mile less for the advanced athlete we're looking at a 70 mile bike ride and a 13 mile run so you're not too far different with where you're at in these weeks between the week 11 12 13 something like that so you're looking about an, an 80 to 50 mile bike ride for your long distance bike ride and 14 13 miles or whatever for that for the run and notice i've got basically you know monday's a one day workout and then on the advanced athletes you'll notice i've got some strength training and stuff but for the advanced athletes i an extra bike ride because it's really the bike is where this this race is really being made like i said it's really challenging but you want to be able to have enough to tank that you can attack that course pretty significantly if your advanced athlete have that energy for the run and be able to attack the hills for the beginner athlete you really need to get everything kind of built up in the face so you can't really necessarily focus on one or the other um, later on there might be a few extra rides or something like that that's you know an optional situation but so just be aware of that you know you're looking about 18 hours at this point for an advanced athlete about 15 hours for you to get an athlete so this is kind of where i would see you being at as far as three months out from ironman check where should my training be where should i be focusing and this is kind of where i can see you know i'd like to hear on the screen you can pause the video watch it later on youtube facebook whatever we watch it and you can see right there, that's kind of where I kind of see you guys being at. So if you want to take a snapshot of that, it's on there on the internet for you to look at. Or if you uh, need a plan or anything like that, always drop a comment. I can uh, drop the plan uh, website address is on there. It's all over my Facebook page and everything. So if you want more information, you can look at that. I'm going to wrap up this video. I'll leave you with, if it does help you out, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe on YouTube, all that kind of fun stuff. If this information helps you and you're doing Ryman chat and you want more information we're posting more videos um if you look at the facebook feed it should show you a group that i am highlighting that's why i'm in chat the training group that i post all my information to um i don't go and spam this on other uh, pages whatever for i'm in chat on facebook and stuff like that so this is where i post my content if there's a question being asked in the group sometimes i'll repost my videos to that comment or something like that but I don't go in there and I don't post another group like a standalone post for this. So if you want my information, I said I've done this for four times, Ironman Certified Coach. I've been on the, the Ironman Become One team for Ironman Chattanooga, helping first timers get to the finish line. I've helped plenty of first timers, plenty of multiple uh, time triathletes finish this race. If you got any questions, put in the comments, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. With that, we're going to wrap it up and I'll see you in the next video.